All right. So welcome, everyone. Um, today, I am joined with the wonderful and fantastic uh, Dr. Vizin here. Um, and we are going to ask a few questions um, and get to know her. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you uh, before we start. Hi, everybody. My name is Victoria Vizin. And uh, well, the first and most important thing is probably you are detecting some sort of uh, dialect or accent. I am Hungarian. I'm from Hungary. In fact, right now I am in Europe. Um, uh, thanks for the COVID. Uh, <laughs> I'm stuck here. And then, well, I am one of the the, the privileged ones that in Europe, uh, some of the, the festivals are still going on. And then I got an invitation. So uh, a couple of days ago, I had a, a huge concert. And um, so I'm lucky to be here. But anyways, I'm uh, even luckier to be the professor, one of the professors at DePaul School of Music. And uh, I'm happy to talk about DePaul. Yeah. <laughs> About it. Tell me how it's been um, being in Europe, but also teaching and, you know, living that dual life. Tell me about how lessons have been going this quarter and um, how just balancing all that during these crazy times. Um, how's it been going? Yeah, so uh, the spring quarantine time was totally uh, spontaneous because obviously we were uh, we were told to to go online immediately. So uh, for the spring quarter, I I just improvised something to motivate my studio students. So I decided that every Wednesday we are going to have a challenge Wednesday. Yes. And then, and then I I just chose every week uh, a different aria or a different song in different keys, obviously, because there were sopranos and mezzo sopranos. I I performed it first and then I gave the uh, the pre-recorded accompaniment for them and then also the different key uh, PDF file um, uh, material and then uh, that was their challenge to record it for me and then I uploaded everything onto my fan site so that was spring and it worked really fine um, when I realized that we are going to continue being remote more than likely uh, I have to change something and then plan it ahead of time mm -hmm. so what I was doing is we previously had um, an invitation to have a little opera, opera production, a mm. live opera production in November at the DuPage Children's Museum for little kids, for educational reasons. And I created a 25 minute opera for all of my students. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know this. Oh my gosh, no <laughs> well, yeah, way. We're doing everything a little, little bit of secret, but yeah, I mean, it's not a secret. Yeah. Wow, so, that's amazing. We are, we are just busybodies. <laughs> yeah, as you should be, as you should yeah. be. That's amazing. Yeah, so that was that. And all of a sudden, uh, we realized that, okay, so COVID is not going to open up museums. And then November the 21st, where we originally mm. would have been there, mm -hmm. uh, is, is kind of like a, a cold, wintry day, probably probably in the Chicago area. Yes. So how about if we are going to postpone that for spring when mm -hmm. we are going to, even with COVID, we can go outdoors uh, mm -hmm. in the parking lot of the, the museum and which is going to be. But uh, just in case, let's start a movie. So we are we are actually filming an opera movie. It's about wow. an hour. I, uh, I'm i a registered libretto uh, writer uh, here in my country. So sure. uh, I've never done a movie script. So this is the first time I'm, I'm writing a movie. Uh, wow. Oh, my gosh. So we are busy. We are very, very busy. Uh, we purchased green screens and uh, everybody's wow. distance. Uh, it's it's really fascinating and it's a huge work. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my gosh. But that is so amazing. I had no idea, number one, that, that was even happening. So that's <laughs> awesome. And number two, that is why I love your studio so much because <laughs> you are always finding creative ways to get art out there. I remember during quarantine seeing people posting about that and I would be like so happy because it was like I was seeing art happen still in these crazy times. So um, thank you so much for these all these awesome ideas and look at you now you're writing like 
hey, this would have never happened if it wasn't for COVID. So, I mean. Yeah, that's true. I mean, definitely not for a movie, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who didn't know? You never know at this point, right? You know, some, you might be writing for a movie. You never know. But that is amazing. I would love to see how that goes. I'm so yeah, excited. You will. To see. you will. It will be out probably uh, before Christmas. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Um, so kind of, a, this is a big question, um, but what led you and what kind of influence did you have to gain an interest in music? Huh. Oh, that's very um, complex. And <laughs> uh, yet it's very simple. So sure. when I was four, um, that was the first time that my parents took me to the local theater and then in this theater, it's kind of like a little bit of musical theater, like operetta style, mm -hmm. and, and then um, just regular plays as well. And I always wanted to uh, become an actress, like, you know, like regular actress. Mm -hmm. I loved dancing. I loved singing. I loved performing. Uh, I had no idea what exactly, what genre I would perform. Mm -hmm. uh, however, mm -hmm. I knew that stage is my, my home. So age four. <laughs> Wow. And, and then age 11, the same stage, uh, that's my karma, I guess. Um, I got my first uh, title role in uh, Zoltan Kodai's, uh, one of Zoltan Kodai's opera. Mm. And they, they did it all with children and full oh. orchestra. And, and it was like, uh, uh, like, like a really uh, huge training for that because we were just kids, you know, even right, though we yeah. were in a special educational uh, music school, but um, we didn't know how to act, you know, like all those <laughs> yeah. little tricks. And uh, that was my whole summer. And then the whole entire season, um, every weekend, I was performing on the big stage. And that was age 11 when I decided, okay, definitely, I'm going yeah. to become an actress, but probably musical theater because I love operetta and I love musicals, you know? Mm -hmm. And then age 14, when I got into uh, high school, same school, it's for 12 years, I went to the same um, comprehensive um uh, conservatory basically and um and then uh, i started to sing and i mean we were singing every day but you know it's kind of like vocal training mm -hmm. and my uh my teacher was uh calling my parents after the first semester exam and uh and then she said well you know i think that this voice is going to be uh slightly um different from musical theater so oh, nothing, wrong with, nothing wrong with mis musical theater but how about if we are going to try for opera so sure. what my, <laughs> first question, my first question was okay um can i be on stage forever with opera mm -hmm. and then she says yeah i mean this is all performing arts and so you know what then i'm going to become an opera singer no problem <laughs> wow that's how oh, it happened God. then you know the the rest is history i went right. to conservatory and so on yes oh my goodness <laughs> Um, so what made you choose DePaul? Like why, why did you want to teach here and how has this influenced you as an artist? And, um, another kind of big question here, but, um, tell me a little bit about your experience teaching at DePaul. Yeah. So I think that, uh, the situation is a little bit the other way around. I think that DePaul chose me, uh, which mm -hmm. I'm very lucky yes. with, with this choice. And, uh, and I, I'm not saying that I never looked for a teaching job. It was in my mind that at some point I would like to give it away, you know, mm -hmm. whatever I have, I would like to teach it. I would like to, to um, just make sure that everybody gets what I experience, the good and the bad side as well. Because I think the most important thing is what I realized that when I started this, this job, uh, one thing they didn't teach me is how to survive and i would like to teach every of them or every of you you know mm -hmm. uh, each and every of you that that yes 
there are bad days as well and mm -hmm. bad phases as well but how to survive and how to keep on going how to motivate yourself and and how to get good positive energy from outside and from mm -hmm. within you you know um and then when um i think when i was doing my my hundreds carmen uh like 17th production or something and i mm -hmm. said okay this is it I'm going to end this role because it was for 12 years and I, I'm, yeah. I'm done with it. Wow. Uh, they still don't understand why I did it, but I know exactly because I, I already had my plan mm -hmm. uh, to, to step up. And, um, and then when I realized that I'm going to do this, this big step, I decided, okay, now I'm going to search for mezzos who are going to be the next Carmens. And, and then I definitely want to challenge myself to give everything away mm -hmm. that I experienced in, wow. in my 12 years of, of Carmen phase. And uh, that's still in my dream that I, I'm already having like, like people, you know, but, mm -hmm. but it's something that I, I it's, it's yet to come who is ready to, to, to dig into this role, but uh, I think this is how it started to grow on me. Like, okay, teaching someone or some few people whom I see, she would be the greatest Carmen of the mm -hmm. next, next generation. That's how I started to get a, a very serious interest in teaching. And then I, obviously along the way, I always had master classes. I like all around the world, whenever I, I went to, uh, to sing, they asked me to do a master class or, mm -hmm. or being the judge of, uh, of a national or international um, competitions. So um, how it happened with DePaul is, um, um, I think it was like three years ago when, um, when I got an invitation to um, to judge for the climate competition. Ah, okay. And, and then it was with Professor Ramsey mm -hmm. and, uh, and then Dr. Henley as well. And we had no idea. I don't know about them, but I had no idea why I, why I was there. <laughs> I think it was the first little test, how wow. we worked together, how the feedback, mm -hmm. it, it be, you know, from us. And, and then... Uh, I was very laid back. I just wanted to to see very good singers and then just <laughs> motivate them. Yeah. And then at the very end, Dr. Esparza said, well, Victoria, can I have a word with you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. And that's how it happened. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That's so amazing. I never knew that either. I'm learning so much today. Oh, my goodness. That's so crazy. Wow. And so I'm very cool. glad. I'm so, really glad to be here. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. So how long have you been at DePaul exactly then? For, oh, for this the is my third season, third wow. uh, school year. So, yeah, wow. I'm, I'm still a baby as a, as a faculty <laughs> member. But, yeah, I'm, I'm planning on sticking here. And, uh, and then I really would like to, to grow in, in both in my artistry and in my uh, me being a professor yes. and then, uh, being, being kind of like a role model for hopefully for for my studio students and mm -hmm. who knows hopefully the whole entire school and uh i just want to grow from what i've seen of being like an outsider of the studio i can tell that you value like family and i can yeah. really tell that everyone in the studio is very close um like is is there like you want to touch on that a little bit of how because from what i've seen Everybody in the studio knows each other. They're all really close. And they're all very supportive of each other. And I love that. Um, so do you want to touch on that a little bit? Um, yes. Kind of the studio? Yes. I, I always believed that, uh, well, I had two wonderful teachers in my life. And, mm. uh, and both of them were uh, up in the age. So they passed away, unfortunately. Mm. Um, the first one in my undergrad years, um, she she was a wonderful woman and then um i immediately felt like she really wanted to have this feeling that okay just just let's just have everyone in the studio and we just crammed up in a small studio and we were like 15 of us mm -hmm. and and then first when i arrived it was like a, a, a lot of competition well you know how it goes competition is on top right but but then uh, I just realized that that's okay. I need to embrace the competition. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, 
I need to, to make sure that we don't need to be like extreme friends or pretend that we are friends. No, right. let's have a great, uh, uh, like, you know, let's, let's be great colleagues. Mm. And, um, and that's how we went for four years. And, and then I think that she was my role model in that mm. uh, term. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was the one who was pushing me towards the next teacher who she thought that she was not enough for me anymore. So she was recommending me while she wow. was still teaching me. Yeah. She was recommending me to another teacher. And I said, oh, my goodness, she really <laughs> loves me. She was the, you know, the best, the best for, for you. Exactly. Yes. So I decided if I ever have this type of situation that I'm going to be a professor, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold it as a class. Mm. And, and this is going to be, we are going to uh, work for each other. That's why the movie is. That's why the challenge from last quarter. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why we are doing breathing Mondays. So we start every beginning of the week we start 30 minutes together at 8 20 and uh <laughs> i know it's crazy um no, but that's awesome like i need that <laughs> like i would love that you, you are more than welcome to, you know what it's <laughs> something that it, anybody can come and then if you want you can uh, you can have that zoom uh, link and then every week say, we doing that i and, might be there watch out i'll be yeah, there why, at not? why not you know why not? Uh, my yogi actually has uh, my hungarian yogi is having uh, an invitation every morning it's, mm -hmm. it's another story if she can she comes if she doesn't she doesn't sure sure, sure but but yes i am mixing the, the breathing exercises with what some sort of like okay chill out now this is mm -hmm. the, the very beginning of your week and then we need to keep on going mm -hmm. so that's that's monday mornings and then and then we have a wednesday when the whole class is coming together the whole studio and then i volunteer to uh to have conversational italian so i mm -hmm. make them speak uh, it's not nothing to do with grammar it's nothing to do with like like sure. speaking in, in we don't speak english in that one hour and then wow. these people don't normally speak italian so sure. i make them speak i'm just uh it, uh it is very challenging for me as well because i'm fluent <laughs> in italian but it's one thing to speak and one thing to mm, teach mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. i'm learning as i say so <laughs> right active learner active learner exactly yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. I never knew any of these things. That's so awesome. And like I said, like I, I can just tell that there's this very close feeling of like mutual respect and everybody gets to know each other so well and very supportive of each other in this studio. So um, kudos to you. It definitely comes off from someone that's not in the studio. I, I totally see that. So. What, where are some, so you talked about how you've been, you know, performing everywhere. Where are some places you've performed? Tell us about your, your background in that. Where all like, where in the world, like favorite places, like all these different things, like tell us about it. We would love to know. Okay. Um, there are some favorite places and then they are favorite places for, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, I can tell that uh, best acoustics and best audience is at the Met. Mm. I was lucky to have three seasons at the Met. I was doing my biggest was with was Carmen, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was just really lovely. And then my first debut uh, was also as a gypsy girl, Maddalena, <laughs> in uh, in Verdi's Rigoletto. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting that the moment I got on stage as Maddalena, I didn't even sing yet, obviously, because I. I'm not the one who starts. Mm -hmm. um, I just felt like everybody was interested in me. Like they really focused. And I will never for uh, forget these type of energies that is coming mm -hmm. so intensely from outside. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt that I was in a family there. Mm -hmm. I loved the work there. I loved that it's like, it, they don't take my time like six, seven mm. weeks. No, 10 mm. days, whole opera, let's go. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. I love that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's very intense, and and then uh, I I loved. I learned a lot. I I got the greatest choreography. Uh, I got to work with Richard Air. I mean, mm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And uh, 
and then the greatest coaches, greatest conductors in the world. So that's, uh, yeah, Mets is number one. And then um, it's now, I don't want to compare, but the next, let's say, it is uh, Covent Garden. I love Covent mm. Garden because, so basically, uh, the European version of the Met is mm -hmm. the Covent Garden because... Uh, they are extremely professional. They are very much like a family. They take care of, of the singers, the artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, um, the aspect of being there for a short term, that's not, this is totally the opposite. I normally go there for uh, two to three uh, months to do one opera show, but it's m much more. Uh, much more shows, obviously. And uh, that's a little bit too much mm -hmm. <laughs> you know being being in in one place for two to three months and doing only one production oh wow um, yeah. because because um just the preparation is about six to seven weeks it depends how long the opera is and how um let's say a francesca zambello uh is definitely having like six to seven weeks for mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. um it, it's worth it but uh we're getting tired of the the production um yeah the production yeah. practices and and and, and uh, I the ideal is for me is about three weeks and that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there is uh, the third one which is um, NCPA in uh, Beijing, China. Wow! Because it's so exotic. The yeah. place is amazing. The culture is totally the opposite from any Westernized countries, mm -hmm. and uh, they love being punctual. They they love to learn because obviously opera is is coming from the Western culture, and then they are learning it constantly how to how to produce a great opera, and uh, and they are just carrying you on their palm. Um, it's it's lovely. It's really a a, a treat to wow. sing there. And um, last but not least, um, in my own home country hungary i can uh, tell you that that that's where i feel totally at home because mm. they are the most critique but when it happens to be great the outcome is great mm -hmm. um the best clap is coming yes. <laughs> you know the church clap is like yes yeah. yeah you feel it <laughs> you know it's coming yeah yes <laughs> Oh my gosh. And it probably feels so full circle for you, like performing back at, in Hungary, back at home. Like that's, that's so awesome that you get to experience that. That's so special. Yeah. I was going to say like, um, I've always wanted to ask this, like, is there a specific performance you like remember where you like kind of take a moment and you're like, yeah, this is, this is right. Like, this is what I was oh, going yeah. to do. Uh, I, I have uh, milestones in my yeah. life. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, 2012 was my biggest milestone, mm. my last Carmen production with Daniel Kramer in Antwerp wow. and, uh, Antwerp and, uh, and Ghent, uh, mm -hmm. Belgium. And, uh, uh, Daniel Kramer is the, um, English National Opera's, uh, artistic director. And then, uh, we became like soulmates there seriously, because basically, he he had a breakthrough through me and mm. uh, it's very it was a very specific um production and um and that's when i i decided okay i cannot do any more right in my life because mm. this is the top of the top i know exactly now why i had to do it for so long because it grew in me mm -hmm. And uh, so that was my first milestone. And wow. then in the same year, I did another milestone. It's kind of like connected together. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the Janaira in uh, Handel's Hercules, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the piece. It's like eight arias only. And it's all kind of like crazy agility and, and right. again, acting, acting, acting. And uh -huh. this is the most important thing for me to act. Right. And, uh, and then uh, the role was very uh, fascinating for me. So um, wow. when I did that, that was my first breakthrough. Um, here it comes. I'm going to tell you how it feels when you really feel down and you don't mm. know where to go. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> big reveal. Um, 
So I was on top, top, top. Mm. And then the more you feel like you are climbing up, the more you feel the stress that you look down. Mm. And then if you make a tiny mistake, you, mm -hmm. you really fall. Right. You, are, you are starting yes. all over yes. and it's a long way to go. So this stress, mm. when you start to, to sing in A theaters and then you're all over the world, um, you realize this and, and then you start to stress out and it affects you physically as well. Mm. And I, at that point, when I was doing the Janaira, I was in a very, very bad uh, physical statement because mm. of my stress level was so Yes, bad. yes. They had no idea how I would go on stage for a four-hour show, which I was just carrying on my shoulder. Right. And then it's only because of one single aria of that role, it gave me a hard time. And mm. aria number three. And, and then I... The moment I decided that that's silly, I'm right. not I'm not coming on stage to to look forward to end the show. I'm coming. I'm doing this because I always wanted to. Right. Do yes. That switch happened mm. during mm. that show, mm. and I got the best review that ah. uh, the star was born. And I realized, okay, from now on, this is it. That moment, my physical stress related thing was gone. Wow. And that was a turnaround. And, and then and I started a new life. It's, it was a step up. And, and then, uh, so these were, these were my connected first uh, milestones ending yeah. Carmen and starting a new habit to enjoy again what I'm doing. Yes. It was very essential. <laughs> yes. And, right in front of me there is a huge uh poster um we wrote an opera and last year we debuted uh that opera it's it's about uh it's about a singer who who sang everything who did everything mm -hmm. uh, in her life and and then she's basically talking about it but it's nothing about words it's about the feelings it's mm. it's a very complex uh one wow. hour one act opera and uh, my colleague on stage is not an opera singer he is a dancer wow. and uh, i love working with kind of like like touching the outskirt of an opera yes and uh, i love the the literally way of a term of the performance mm. so i want to move i want to have the 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 whole connection of the movement anyways that's just one little thing uh to mention and then um, yes yeah so these type of thing the cre creating the creation phase where mm. i am at this point is mm. is, a, is a big milestone Yes. Oh my gosh, that's a huge milestone. And it's so inspiring to hear how, you know, even as a performer who you had the role, you had everything going, you know, you still kind of, there's always these like lingering like thoughts of like what is going on. And it's just, it's very taxing, but to see how you took that mindset and, and flipped it, that's, that's amazing. And, um, you know, as an undergrad, you know, sophomore, I, I, I see that sometimes where I myself, you know, I just get so caught up in schooling and things that I just kind of forget why I'm here, you know, and why, why I do this. And, why I love to sing, you know, and that's, that's so important. So that's, that's so amazing that you, you, you saw that and to hear that happen, like, that's awesome. And um, I'm so glad I asked the question. And <laughs> that, that's awesome. What's your favorite thing about teaching students? Hmm. The passion, the love. These are very, uh, you know, like generalized uh, terms, but I think without love and passion, there is no way to teach. There is no way to give and um, that there is no way to create new generations, mm. great singers. So yes, um, 
I want to say an anecdote about passion and love. I went to Taiwan and uh, I was working with, uh, with a tenor. We were very close with Upper Australia over there. Okay. And, uh, I had an American uh, tenor colleague. And at the very end, everybody gave something to each other. Well, it's kind of like, you know, token of appreciation. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Kind of like a family. Well, for, for five weeks, every day in a different culture, it was tough first. But then we, we got the positive part of it. And, and then uh, what he did, he was giving the two Carmens. We had two Carmens, um, Kirsten Chavez and, mm. uh, and myself. Wow. And he he gave I was the last one he, he gave mine the last and then first Kirsten and then uh, she got love and then everybody would think like okay love is the, the top 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 which is you yes know? yes and and then he was really nicely talking about how Kirsten is really embracing everyone with her wonderful love and then so it was going on and on and on and it was true mm -hmm. and then here i am the other carmen and i was like okay what am i what am i you know? right yeah <laughs> And then, um, so we got fans like, you know, the silk fans. Yes, with, yes. Silk mm. fans. And then with a calligraphy, um, he actually uh, made uh, an artist paint with a calligraphy. One word, passion. Wow. And, and then he said to me that, that my passion is, is just putting everything into that one mm -hmm. term mm -hmm. because... Uh, it's not enough for saying that love is is describing me passion mm -hmm. is the one that is motivating me and my surroundings mm -hmm. so ever since that i i always describe myself that yes i think this is the best term it's the passion where i can passionately love i can passionately give i can passionately live mm -hmm. and sing and perform wow yeah as someone who is studying to be an educator. I so agree with that. And I um, I so commend you for seeing that because when I want a teacher, I want them to see my passion. So I love that. I love, love, love that. That is so cool. If, so let's say it's my senior year, um, either in high school or maybe my last year in my undergrad, and I'm looking to go to DePaul, um, but I'm a little unsure, I, you know, I, I don't know, I'm looking at some other schools. Um, what would you tell me as a, a good reason or a, um, a reason to convince me to come to DePaul? What would be something to grab my attention? Okay, I don't think that we need to convince people. I think DePaul is the number one in that area. And and then uh, we are big enough to, to make great things, mm -hmm. great ideas on studio level and on faculty level and on school level, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that we have got the best place because we are in the middle of Chicago. Chicago mm -hmm. is the number one place to go. The culture is just the top. Mm -hmm. And... And we have got amazing faculty here and uh, on every level. I mean, uh, just look at the theory uh, teachers, look at the choir teachers, look at just our faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, my clinics are really, really awesome. And then uh, nevertheless, um, their new colleagues, the students are awesome. So what I like is that um, we are teaching you guys how to collaborate the best way, how to stay mm. human and how to be free within rules. You know, I mm -hmm. think that it's very important to, to, to become a member of something great. And mm -hmm. this is the call for me. That I remember when I came to do my audition, <laughs> I, remember... I remember that. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I remember. And I, I think I was wearing a pink bow tie or something. Yes, <laughs> yes, 
and I, I was so nervous and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm at DePaul. This is so crazy. And I knew about DePaul and, and I was just, you know, I think my actually a little funny story. My parents um, came up to me before my audition. I love my parents and they're so supportive of me. This has nothing to do with them not being supportive of me. Um, but they came up to me and they came out of like a parents meeting and, um, they said like, oh, you know, just, just letting you know, this is a really hard school to get into, you know, and, and, you know, the big scary numbers of like our acceptance rate. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, well, I'm going to take it in, you know, I'm, I'm here now. So I might as well take it in. And I remember walking into my audition, just being so nervous. Like I, I think I like forgot to close the door or something. Like, I don't know. I was just, I was super nervous. And then I just remember like after I finished singing and I, and I sat down in that chair, just seeing all of you. And you were, like you said, like you were just human. And that was so important to me. And I love that because like there were some places I went to and this is no offense to any places I went to, but it just, it didn't feel genuine. And when I immediately stepped into that room, I felt that genuine like care for me and as a performer and wanting me to succeed and just you know, getting to know me, you know, like little, um, senior me, you know, I think I, that was, that was something so special. And so I so capture that. And as someone that's currently there, I still capture that even in the online setting, you know, like DePaul has done such a good job of really, you know, taking, grabbing it by the reins and just saying, okay, what do we do now? You know, like, let's do it. Let's, let's figure it out. Let's do it. Um, let's make a movie, you know, like, let's do it. You know, why not? And, um, but also still caring about, you know, us as people, you know, not just students, but as people and as young artists and, you know, like that's so important. So, um, I totally see that and, you know, I can go on and on and on, but <laughs> I, I, I won't get too into how much I love to Paul, but yes, I totally, totally see that. So thank you for saying that. This is kind of a fun question. So besides singing, um, and all these things going on. What are some ways that you've kept busy um, during quarantine? Or what are some things you've done for fun during quarantine? Okay, um, the uh, quarantine in spring, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, that was not fun. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> okay, so the first thing what I did is I did a rigorous daily routine schedule mm. because uh, which if somebody knows me they know that I hate, <laughs> I hate this word hate but I really I am against routine because wow. uh, my other motto is being free you know freedom yeah yeah and, and so um for me, routine is, is kind of like, okay for a little fave. I'm okay with it, but so that's what I did. Um, every morning, I I woke up, and I had a mandatory at least thirty minutes yoga. Wow! In, in my little, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I just closed my doors, and then it was only me and my yoga mat. And then um, after that, um, I just did uh, aromatherapy for mm -hmm. myself, and. Uh, after that, I I was reading 30 minutes. That was my start of the day. And then at 9 a.m., I started teaching. Okay. And at 11.30 a.m., I had 30 minutes to make a, a two-course meal for my family. And wow. I just told them that they must come downstairs. <laughs> this is the only time we can be together. Mm -hmm. So 12 to 12.30. Uh, we ate together. There was no, awesome. uh, no TV, no nothing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then we just, we just shared some thoughts. And after that, 1230, I continued teaching and, um, until, until the end of the day when I was really tired and I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I would be exhausted after that. I would crash on the floor just hearing about that, but that's so awesome. That's so amazing that you had a routine going. I, um, I, I'm so jealous of that because I remember during my quarantine, 
I was just, you know, it, it took a while for me to kind of get used to things. And I was always like, I really should be doing a routine. So that's awesome that you took that advantage and that, that says something about you. That's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate you um, meeting with me today and uh, having people get to know you. Um, this is so exciting that we get to do this. And um, I think this is such a great opportunity for people just to see who we are, you know, as people. Yeah. Um, so it's been so fun. Um, and I'm so glad we got to meet and I got to interview. This is kind of awesome for me too. <laughs> um, uh, so thank you so much. I so appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. It was really fun. Oh, cool.